What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about detailing stuff. Um, more in particular, I'm gonna be talking about the Roops polishers. So I have two different polishers from them. I have the Roops LHR 15 ES. That's the first generation 15 millimeter throw polisher. It comes with a five inch backing plate and I just recently upgraded to the second generation LHR 21 ES Mark II. So that has a six inch backing plate as opposed to the five and it also has a 21 millimeter throw versus the 15. Now that all sounds pretty complicated but it's actually quite simple when you get into it. So I'm gonna actually show you and talk all about this today. But the part that I'm really going to address on is the most important modification for these polishers. So this here is a Mini Cooper's hood and the paint is quite neglected. So if you ever want to refine the scratches on the paint, you're going to use an assortment of different tools. You can do all of this stuff by hand where you refinish it, you remove all the scratches and you take it all out by hand, but it's a lot of work. Now if you do plan on doing this to an entire vehicle um, or multiple vehicles for that matter, the best way to get that done is by using a machine. So I'm first going to show you the scratches that we have here. You can see that there are a lot of swirl marks and a lot of these imperfections need to be removed. So these swirl marks are quite common from misuse, um, improper washing, and just over time, these swirl marks will develop. So by using a proper dual action polisher, you can remove all of these scratches very safely. Roops has been basically the industry standard for the best polishers on the market. So this here is a dual action polisher that I've been using for the last, I wanna say three years now. This tool right here is on the more expensive side of the polishing lineup, However, the quality out of this machine is like no other. So what's really nice about this is the fact that this actually goes in multiple directions. This is called a dual action polisher. So this not only will spin, but it'll actually oscillate. And what that does is it prevents holograms from being introduced into the paint when you're refining the scratches on the paint. So I've been using this thing for the last three years and it's been incredible. It still works to this day and I love this tool. Now the reason why I upgraded is for two different reasons. So this here is the Mark I. This is the first generation of these polishers. These things were introduced a couple years ago and they do an amazing job. Even to this day, they cut back paint very nice, very easily, and it's an amazing tool to use. However, they've come up with a new lineup called the Mark II, which is basically just a better version of their polishers. They looked at their old polishers, they looked at what they could improve on, and they basically did that. So this here is still an amazing tool to this day, however, the Mark II is an even better machine. The Mark I was available in a 15 and a 21 millimeter option. So this is the 15, as you can see right here, so that means that the polisher will oscillate 15 millimeters in any direction when it's oscillating. It can spin freely whatever direction that it wants, but that's the most important part of this tool. The second generation stuff does the same thing. It's got a 15 or a 21 millimeter throw, and you get a different size backing plate depending on which one you want. However, there's one flaw with these tools, and I'm not entirely sure why they come like that. However, there's one simple mod that you can do to these things to make it so that the polishing procedure is a lot easier, it's a lot more predictable, and the pad doesn't want to stall as easily. This polisher right here has the washer mod installed on it. Now the washer mod is basically exactly what you think it is. It's a washer that's installed on this tool to allow a little bit of a gap between the polisher and the backing plate so this can spin freely. The original design of it is not like that. So I'm actually gonna show you how simple it is to do it. So with the polisher here, it comes included with an, with an Allen wrench. You're going to loosen this guy up and then with it loose, you're gonna to wanna to unscrew it completely and what that's going to do, it's going to allow the backing plate to be removed. So you can just lift the whole thing up and out. And you can see that I have another washer attached right here. So you can see that this is basically the entire thing. So we've got a bolt that secures the backing plate onto the machine. And without this washer, what's going to happen is we're going to get friction in between the backing plate and the machine. So I'm going to tighten this back up and I'll show you how much of a difference there is. So when I go ahead and actually turn this now, there's going to be more friction and it's not going to spin as easily as before. You see what I mean? So now there's no gap in between the tool and the polisher. Now the reason why Roops designed it this way is so that the only time that the backing plate would spin is when the machine is powered on. Now only at that point will it spin. The most important part of these kind of tools is the fact that it will oscillate. So when it does that, that is where it cuts down the paint. You don't want these to spin too much. That's not the purpose of this tool. This is not a rotary tool. This is a dual action polisher. So this goes and when it oscillates, it cuts down the paint. On a rotary polisher, the only time that it'll actually cut back paint and remove scratches is when this spins. 
So the inside will actually remove less paint than the outside of the pet. Now when this whole thing oscillates, it removes everything at a nice uniform rate. So that's a really nice thing when we're talking about paint because you're not gonna have any spots that are gonna be removing more than another spot on the paint. It makes it so that the refining stage is super easy and it's super predictable. Now I'm actually gonna be doing this exact same washer mod to my brand new tool that I have here. So my little brother, he just picked up a new Scion FRS, or at least new to him, and it does have scratches in it. It's not a brand new vehicle, so there are going to be imperfections in the paint. So my little brother, he wanted to buy a new tool, and I said, hey, well, if you want, you can buy my old tool. Works great, does the job, and I don't really think he's gonna be doing too much detailing, but if he's just doing his own vehicle, this will do the trick. And I figured at that point, I can upgrade to this new one and have the new tool, and I can also do another modification for you guys here. So I'm gonna set this aside and show you what I have in the box. So this guy here is a new Roops LHR21 Mark II. So what I'm gonna do with it is open this guy up and show you what is inside the box. So you can see we've got some papers, we have a user guide and a whole bunch of other stuff, probably the warranty information. We have the machine, and this is the most important part of it. Here she is. That's basically everything that's inside of here, so I'm gonna put this aside and show you this new tool. So this is the 21, and the 21s, doesn't matter if you buy the Mark I or the Mark II, they come with a six inch backing plate. So the backing plate on this is actually a little bit bigger and it requires six inch polishing pads so you can actually remove paint and those scratches. So you can see how much bigger this is versus the five inch. Now what's cool about this tool is that you can do a conversion that's very easy. What that is, is you can install a five inch backing plate on this machine. And the benefit of that is that you're gonna have the 21 millimeter throw with a five inch backing plate. So if you're doing only flat panels, if you're only let's say working on Jeeps, a six inch will be perfect because it's gonna remove the most amount of paint um, in a certain amount of time. But at the same time, you're not gonna be working with curves so you don't need this to be very small. If you're working with small intricate areas, the smaller size pad, the better. If you can get down to a one inch to get some stuff done, I would do that. But if you don't need to, you go with the bigger pad. So what I'm gonna be doing is getting the best of both worlds. So I'm gonna be removing the six inch pad and I'm gonna replace it with this five inch. So this is a brand new tool. And actually before I do that, I wanna show you that you can't spin this either. See how it spins a little bit? I wanna have it so it spins freely. So what I'm also going to do is I'm gonna do the washer mod while I have this entire thing apart. So just like before, lefty loosey, you're gonna crack that bolt loose, take the whole thing up and out. You can see the internals are pretty much the same. The motor itself is slightly different, which is, well, basically what makes the difference between the Mark I and Mark II. The Mark II is slightly more powerful. But you can see that I have a small washer that'll sit right on top of that. I'm gonna open this guy up. And this is basically all I need to do the conversion. So you can see that I have that right there. This will slide over top like that. You use your new bolt that's applied in there. You could probably use the old one too, but I'm just gonna use the new one because it's included. And then just tighten this up. And then at this point, you don't have to use six inch polishing pads to remove paint. You can use a five inch and it does the trick. So with that now tightened up, you can see it spins really easily. Now what I think is super cool is what happens when you turn on the camera and you play both of these in slow-mo. So you can see that there's a really big difference in between the polisher that has the washer mod versus the one that doesn't. So if you were to actually break it down, you'll be able to see that once you let off the polisher, what's gonna happen is the pad is going to want to spin with the one that has the washer mod and it's not going to want to spin as soon as you let off the trigger for the one that doesn't have the washer mod. When you actually put that into practice and start polishing paint, if you ever have to work with any kind of curved area, the one that has the washer mod is going to want to stall on that area and it's going to make it so that it's not going to burn through the paint. It's not going to keep spinning and keep spinning um, should that ever happen to you. After polishing the paint with the polisher with the washer mod for exactly one minute, it rendered us amazing results on the paint. The excess polish can be buffed off and we can visually inspect the paint to see how much work was done. After a couple minutes of cutting back the paint, you can see how much of a difference there is from before and after. You can see that there's still plenty of swirl marks on this side, but after we did a simple cut, you can see the paint looks a hell of a lot better. Now it still doesn't look 100%, but I do need to follow this up with another polishing stage. However, the paint looks a lot better, and if you repeat the same procedure for your entire vehicle, you can make a world of a difference on your paint.
Now by doing that washer mod, the polishing pad is going to spin a lot easier. And let's say you're working on an area like this that's got like a little curve to it or something intricate, it's going to be a lot easier to polish that stuff out and get in the, like the little valleys of each one of those like peaks, I guess. Um, it'll make it so that all of that paint down in there is going to come up rather easily because you have a smaller pad. Now, if you were to go down to let's say a three inch pad, you're gonna get even better results in those little areas. However, if you're doing big stuff like a door panel or something like that, a six inch pad is going to be ideal. However, regardless of the setup, the washer mod is a must for these kinds of polishers. If you guys wanna see a full tutorial on how to go ahead and fully polish your vehicle, I will have a link in the description box and I'll also have a link right here that you guys can click. Now that link is gonna be giving you a lot more information regarding the full procedure on how to polish it, what to use, what products to buy, and all that stuff. This video is only basically showing you the differences between the two polishers along with the washer mod. So if you have a Roops polisher, it doesn't matter what kind it is, if you haven't done this washer mod to it, definitely do it. But I'm gonna bring this little mini outside to show you guys the paint, to show you how much of a difference there is from before and after. So with this mini now detailed, the paint looks so much better. So if you go up to the paint, you'll actually be able to see a nice, clear reflection out of it without swirl marks all over it. So that's basically what you can do when you have a dual action polisher. The results that you'll get are unlike anything else. Now what's really nice about running a DA versus a rotary tool when polishing paint is that when you have the sun in the reflection, you're not going to have what's called holograms, which are basically micro scratches in the paint. So if you polish the paint from left to right, what you would actually see is little scratches in the paint, even after you're done polishing it, wherever you took your buffer. So if you went like this and down and over, and you went across the paint out in the sun, you'd be able to see those mini scratches. So if you have a DA, you're not gonna run into those issues, especially if you have this washer mod. I know I could have made this video shorter, but I want to be pretty thorough with this explanation along with the procedure to do the washer mod. Now, if you guys have any other questions regarding the video, throw it down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to give it a read, give you guys some help, and hopefully make your guys' lives a little bit easier. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.